<laughs> All right, we're gonna get started. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, does anybody know about USB-C or USB Type-C? All right, it's a new connector, new USB uh, standard. Small, 2.4 millimeter height, right? Uh, very small connector. And reversible plug orientation. Right? You don't have to hunt for that, you know, the right uh, orientation people to, to, to plug in, right? And also, it's directional agnostic. What does that mean? The old USB cable, there's an A side, there's a B side, a different size, right? So you know that the B goes into the device, the A goes into the host. No longer true. They're directional agnostic. In addition to that, in addition to carry USB data, you could carry other data in an alternate mode. The same cable can carry USB, super speed USB at 10 gigabit per second. You could pair a display port, HDMI, Thunderbolt. So all you need is one connector on your PC or smartphone to transfer everything. Not only that, you could implement power delivery over the Type-C cable. You can deliver up to 100 watts, right? That's a lot of power, okay? So we're not gonna talk about all this stuff. We're gonna focus on one topic. And the topic is power delivery. Because the ability to carry 100 watts of power over USB-C has a profound impact, right? Us as a consumer, you as a product developer, and society in general, we're gonna talk about why. So USB-C has been around for about three years now, about three, four years. In the past three years, it has been very successful in the PC space. It's one connector you build into your PC. You could power it, you could send data, receive data, and you can drive external monitors up to 4K resolution. So quite successful in PC. In the next five years, USB-C is going to be your power source in the car. It's able to charge your smartphone, your tablet, your notebook, your game console, anything that could be powered by USB-C, there'll be plenty of a USB ports in the car to power everything. And what we believe is in the next, in the next 10 years, USB-C will power everything. All the electronic devices, everything that has a wall word plugged into the wall today will be replaced by a USB-C wall word or USB-C directly built into the wall outlet to power everything. Okay. Do you have a box like this in your house? Yeah. Yes, I do. A big box. Why? Because every device comes with a unique power adapter dedicated to that device, which you cannot reuse or share with anything else, right? You end up in a box like this. And you always save them, you know why? Because in the future, you may just need it. You don't know, you're afraid to throw it away, right? But three months later, you come back to it, you look at this power adapter, Wait, which one is this for? You don't remember, and you end up in that box forever in your house. <clears throat> so, that's the world that we live in today. Conventional power adapters with different connectors that just don't work with each other. Fixed current voltage. The power adapter come with your device. It's a fixed voltage, fixed current, right? If it's 12 volts, 12 volts. 1.4 amp is 1.4 amp, right? It's not meant for, to power anything else. And it's definitely not made for sharing and reuse. That's why you have that box. But USB-C is different. It's a universal connector, right? That USB-C connector is universal. And it could support multiple voltage levels and current levels that could be negotiated with the power contract. And it's standardized for reuse and sharing. So therefore, we want this world to migrate to this, one connector that rules them all. So the world without USB-C is very miserable, right? We're in the very miserable today. So for example, I have an Amazon Echo at home. I, move, I want to move it from my living room to the bedroom. For somewhere in the middle, I lost a power adapter. So, when the, so I went on Amazon to buy a replacement power adapter. I found it, I found the power adapter. But the next picture kind of intrigues me. I click on it, what it says is, be careful what you buy, because it works with the Echo, it works with the Fire TV second generation, but it doesn't work with anything else that Amazon produces. Why is that? Right? Why can they just all agree on a single power adapter coming from the same company? So a lot of confusion. Any frequent travelers? Do you carry this like I do when I travel? I do, because 
my laptop, my smartphone, my shaver, my camera, all part, different power adapter, different connectors. I mean, very frustrating, right? So in an ideal world, the world will move, get rid of all of that. If all these devices can be powered by USB-C, you just carry one, just carry that one power adapter. Okay. So talk about that box. You know how many power adapters are being shipped every year? One million tons of power adapters are being shipped every year. That's a lot of power adapters, right? And the number is increasing because the average life cycle of consumer goods is shrinking, right? The constant upgrade to new technology, adding smart to things. So there are more and more devices being shipped. So that number is rising very rapidly. So the box in my, in my house will end up in a landfill here, right? A big problem for the world. There has been some effort to try to curb e-waste, especially um, with regards to power adapters. For example, Digital Europe, the trade organization in Europe, and USBIF, that is the governing body of the USB specification, signed a memorandum early last year, right, mandating USB-C charger for all mobile phones sold in Europe. But we think that goal is too small, not ambitious. We believe that all electronic devices consuming less than 100 watts should be powered only by USB-C. Okay. That's our vision. How do we get there? How do we do it? We have a solution for that. Okay. We have a chip. It's called the BCR replacement chip. Oh, the part number is CYPD3177. It's a chip that is very simple to use. It requires only eight passive components and a simple power fed to implement a simple USB-C power sync. Okay. And it can support five PD profiles, five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15, 15 volts, 20 volts, up to five amps, which are commonly found in the commercially available power adapters. Easily configurable with external resistors, to set up the, the required voltage and the required current. Let's just say, if your device, for example, uh, the Philip Electric Shaver, five volts, uh, 15 volts and one amp, you will set up the, the voltage divider resistors to five volts and one amp, and the power sink, when it's connected to a power adapter, will request five volts and one amp, uh, 15 volts and one amp, and to get the power contract is required. So very simple, no firmware development required. Drop in, it just work. But it is sophisticated because it has a lot of protection circuitry built in. You know, when the V-Bus can go up as high as 20 volts, you know, and you run into a risk, a potential risk, that the power could be touching on the digital pins right next to it in the, uh, in the Type-C receptacle or connector. For example, the communication channel that's required for PD is sitting right next to V-Bus. Right? The V-Bus could be 20 volts. You know, over the time wear and tear of the connector or you don't disconnect the, you know, the plug in the right way, you may create a short. But that short protection is built into the chip. Okay? And also the chip comes with over current, over voltage protection, as well as EAD protection. So everything you need to protect that connector is also built into the chip. This is the kit that you can easily get and to prototype quickly how to convert your product to use USB-C. So the kit is very small, measuring only 3.7 centimeter by 2.5 centimeter. It has a USB-C receptacle. This is where you plug in the USB-C power adapter. It's got a five setting rotary dial. This is where you select one of the five PDOs, five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts. It's got a power terminal. This is where the negotiated voltage will go out. It's got a couple of LEDs, power LEDs. When the board is powered up, it's lit green. When there's a power contract in place, it will stay green. If there's a PDO mismatch, for example, you want 12 volts, the power adapter doesn't have 12 volts. You will lit red, fault LED. You also has um, uh, one header there. Uh, to, give, to expose the I2C interface. If you want to connect it to external MCU, you can through I2C. It also tells you the orientation of the plug. So it has a flip signal, tells you 
the current orientation. Is it right side up or right side down? All right, so very simple kit um, that you can work with. So we're going to do a quick demonstration here. Uh, Planati that runs application engineering for our group will show you uh, with a logic analyzer. This is also a Cypress product. Uh, a protocol analyzer, once it's plugged in, uh, you could see everything that is going on over the uh, CC line. So the kit, the BCR kit, is connected to a, a constant current electric load. Uh, this could draw up to 200 watts. Of course, we're not going to use 200 watts. So it's going to step through the five PDOs to show you how the power contract works. So we're going to plug into um, to a power adapter. As soon as you plug in, you see the traffic going on over the, uh, the communication channel. And the source, which is the power adapter, advertises its capabilities. It supports 5 volts, 5 volts 3 amp, 9 volts 3 amp, 12 volts 3 amp, 15 volts 3 amp, and 20 volts 2.25 amp. So that's a 45 watt power adapter. Okay, five PDOs. And then the BCR kit, this, this is the source. The BCR kit is a sink. And the sink, right now, selected profile one, data object one, which is five volts and one amp, right? That's the actual power and current that's being measured by the analyzer, okay? So now, Kalani will turn the rotary dial to the next profile. You see, as soon as that profile is turned, the BCR chip automatically renegotiates power with the source. So now, it is selected 9 volts and 1 amp. Now it's drawing 9 volts and 1 amp, okay? So as you turn the rotary dial, you, you will just keep on renegotiate the power profile to 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, etc. Right, so five profiles. So that's a very simple demonstration. We also have a device, it's already retrofitted. So for example, uh, this Philips Ralco shaver, um, 15 volts, 1 amp. So the power adapter comes in with is a 15 volt, 1 amp. We simply cut the sparrow connector away from the uh, power adapter it comes in with. Connect the other end to the uh, to the DC out voltage terminal of the kit. Select the rotary dial to 15 volts. Now this device could be powered by USB-C, and we're going to do exactly that. So once you plug it in, now you can see uh, the power adapter is now charging the shaver, and then. The power profile is 15 volts, is measure of 15 volts, and the shaver is drawing about 160 milliamp. It's not charging the battery, right? So you could very easily convert your device without changing anything, right? To do a very quick prototyping within minutes uh, to power by USB-C. So three easy steps. If you have a product, or you're working on a product, or a future product, you want USB-C to be the power source to your product. What do you do? First, you buy a USB-C power adapter, widely available everywhere, right? You can buy anywhere. Um, make sure that you support the voltage that you want, right? Most of them, for example, the 45 watt power adapter you can buy, support the five profiles that we just talked about. Take your device, if it's powered by a, by a power adapter, right? Cut the ends off. Connect it to the power terminal. Select the dial to the voltage that you want. Connect it to the power adapter, plug into the wall. The power contract will be negotiated between the chip and the power adapter, the chip inside the power adapter. The right voltage and current will flow and powers it. Very simple, right? So you take this to your boss, say, hey, I just did a prototype, right? We can convert the connector to type C. And he gives you the okay to start the project. You buy the chip from Cypress, put it in, convert this connector to Type-C, and you're done, right? Very simple. But you know what? Talk is cheap. When I say three easy steps, are they really easy? 
we're going to prove it to you is going to be very easy because we're going to do a live prototype, a brand new product, a brand new power adapter, and a brand new kit. Palani will do this, as I said, within less than four minutes, less than three minutes, less than three minutes. That's going to prototype from start to finish in less than three minutes. This is a brand new Amazon Echo. Let's try to do this. All right, this is a product that consumes 15 volts and 1.4 amp. All right, so when I say four minutes, I mean it because I'm going to count it. All right, ready? All right, first thing is clip. Go. Throw that. All right, so we just cut the wire off the power adapters that comes in with. All right, so Pilani now is gonna strip the wires. That's really putting his uh, wire stripping skill to the test to see how fast he can do it. Now we have reached the 30 second mark. <laughs> He's got, he's got one wire done, he's doing the other. Okay, now we're approaching one minute. All right, so the wire stripping is done. Now he's going to connect that. He's going to connect that to the uh, power terminal. So when it's connected to the uh, power adapter, the, the power will flow out through the terminal. All right, he's screwing the two wires to the power terminal. Okay, he's making sure the rotary dial is switched to 15 volts because that's what the Amazon Echo takes. Connect it back to the barrel jack of the device and plug into the power adapter. The green LED is on, the power contract is in place. And the Amazon Echo is now powered. <laughs> Two minutes and 17 seconds. That's how fast all of you can prototype, can quickly prototype your product to take USB-C power, right? No changes to your device, just do a quick prototyping. So very easy, right? When I say three easy steps, it's really easy. So, you may say, great, USB-C is in PCs, they're in smartphones, but they're still new. In my world, USB-C is too new. Therefore, I have to wait, right? USB-C, I just don't have a USB-C power adapter. My customer don't know where to buy them, right? We should just wait and see. I'm telling you, don't wait, because there are 250 uh, different models of personal computers now using not only USB-C, but USB-C is the power source, the only power source to power the, uh, the notebooks, okay? Many models. There are over 60 models of flagship smartphones are using USB-C as a power source. There are over 500 different kinds of third-party chargers, power banks that you can buy, you know, online from Amazon, right? So this is increasing by the minute. And many of your colleagues have restarted. The Nintendo Switch uses PD to power it. The GoPro camera uses USB-C to power. Cisco IP phone, Google Wi-Fi uh, um, router, and there are many, many more to come, right? Including your next product, right? So think when you design your next product, 
and as a power uh, part of your design to think about convert your power barrel connector design to USB-C now. How do you get started? Well first you need to get a kit, right? To do a quick prototyping. So this this kit looks like this. It's called CY4533. It's easy PD BCR kit. BCR, barrel connector replacement, right? So easy to remember. It's available on cypress.com, cypress.com slash CY4533. And the analyzer, the way to monitor the traffic over the communication channel uh, where the power source and power, power sink and negotiate power, uh, it's always available. A very simple protocol analyzer it's also available on cypress.com. It's the CY4500, okay? Those are available from cypress.com today. Any questions? Now we come to the most important part of the presentation because if you ask a question, a good question, you'll get a kit. Yes, sir? What power profiles are supported by the BCR? Uh, <laughs> Great. What power profiles are supported by the BCR kit? Five power profiles. Five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, up to five amp. Can they be changed by software or on a hot coded? It, it changed by a rotary dial. Change by a rotary dial. Take a screw, change it, and you will, we will step through you will step through this power profiles. But those are hard coded in, so they, they cannot be changed. You can change it through the resistor setting. You can ah. change the resistors to get the exact current uh, that you want. Yeah. Did I give you a kit? Uh, no. No? Okay. Not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, you have one. Yes. Thank you. Um, why don't you use software to um, install, for example, if you want to use 5 amps? <laughs> Yeah, you can. Why don't you do software? You can. It's not required, but you can. For example, in that shaver example, if you want the MCU in the shaver to set the voltage and current, you can through I2C. So there are registers you can you can program and set. Yes? Can you connect to a conversion cable from the Type A to this device? Can you get the 5 volts through or nothing with the old things? You could do five five volts. Five, five volts. Yeah. Can you pass through five volts? Yeah. You could do five volts, right? Because uh, in order to to raise the V bus over five volts, you have to use the Type C in power delivery. Five volts does go through it. Yes. Five volt does go through it. That's a good question, by the way. You get five volts. Yes. Is it possible uh, to read uh, the capability of the power supply and uh, read it them um, by I square C? No. The I square C only talks to this chip. It has no way about knowing what the power adapter does. Okay, right. So, so that's that's the protocol analyzer. analyzer. The protocol analyzer sip the traffic from the bus. Uh, okay. This is what. Okay. But that's a good question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Is the USB analyzer possible to analyze a normal USB transmission? Good question. Is the protocol analyzer can also analyze regular USB traffic, the data? No, it can't. <laughs> it only does the communication channel, okay? But that's Power nevertheless a, a good question. Yes. Uh, can you reprogram the settings on the small on the, on the PCR? Yes, you can. Not program, reconfigure. Reconfigure. Yes, through I2C, writing the registers. So let's just say if you have the settings and the hardware, you want to override it, you, you don't want to take 9 volts anymore, you want to take 12 volts, or you want to uh, set a voltage range, uh, you can just write to it to override. And what's what change voltages? I mean, USB-C just got 5 volt, 9 volt, and, but what if you need 7.5 volts? Do you need an additional step up, step down converter? That's a good question. My product takes 7.5 volts. It's not in this profile, what do I do? You could use a 9 volt and step down to 7.5 with DC DC conversion in your product. It doesn't come with this product, but Thanks. good question. Can you use the, the USB data connections as well? No. So. You could use, yeah, this is power only, okay. right? If you want data over the same connector, you can because this, the communication channel goes in parallel with the data bus. It, it doesn't affect the data at all. Yeah. Good question. I know you have a question. Yeah. Do you have quick charge? 
do we use do we have quick charge no this is a power deliver well <laughs> quick charge quick charge 4.0 4.0 is based on power delivery standard okay. so let we have to be very specific yeah, yeah. Okay. yes 5 amps how much voltage can i supply this 20 volts 20 volts 5 amp that's the usb power delivery standard up to 100 watts oh yeah for you, you have a question. Can it be used for everything, every device, or specific to? You can use any device. Like I said, the goal is to the goal is to power any electronics, consuming less than 100 watts with USB-C. You can power anything. If your television consumes less than 100 watts, of course you can. <laughs> Not refrigerators. <laughs> Yes. Is there any possibility that the chip itself recognizes how many voltage it needs? For example, you only adapt the flavor without knowing how many it needs. Uh, no, you can't. You, you have to know uh, the exact power uh, that the sink requires, and therefore you will make the exact request to the source. Is there a way to figure it out without the chip? No. The chip will recognize the voltage in the ampere and it sets it himself. What's that? Um, he recognizes the voltage and the ampere and he sets it himself for this power without you cha um, changing it. Well, what you're saying is, would the chip be intelligent enough to detect how much power the system takes and therefore they will make the request to the source? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> we need an NCU. We yeah. need an NCU. The NCU. Tell, let the NCU to tell the chip what's required. Yeah. Yes? Um, is there something similar simple for the source side? Yeah, we have something similar for the source. We have a solution also in the power source as well. But we can talk about that later. Okay, but good question. Can I use this uh, CPU also for powering an MCU? So is there a 5 volts, 3 volts output yes. from, from this one? Not from this chip. The chip does the negotiation. No, the no, no, no. no. It needs the supply for itself. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would like to, to use this supply for itself. For me. Is yes. It possible? Yes. This chip could power directly from the V bus. Yeah, but it has uh, some step down or something like that. It's inside the chip. But you have no access to the internal voltage. No. Yeah. Yeah, this chip has a has a DC DC regular built in. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the V bus is, yeah. 20 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, the V bus directly su is the power supply to the chip. And it has an internal voltage, but you have no access to the yeah, internal Yeah, correct. So Just enough to power the chip itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for small currents, it would yeah. be nice to get that as well. Yeah. Okay. Good question. But you already have a kit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was out of. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Something about the EMC. Yes. How, uh, the signal is uh, from the power is uh, uh, spectral component. The components. If I want to make some uh, spectrum analyzer, or it's a very small signal. Oh, that's a much deeper question and uh, requires a long answer. We'll talk to you after the show, but I'll give you a kit. Anybody else? No. I got more kids to go. <laughs> a simple question will do. Ask a simple question, you'll get a kid. For example, can I get a kid please? That's also a question. Uh, how the how are dissipation range with the with the rising walls? Mm -hmm. Or power dissipation? Uh, let me overthink my question. Okay. But you have the courage to ask a question, you deserve a kit. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yes? Can I get a kit? <laughs> <laughs> Can you get a kit? <laughs> yes. Thanks. Sorry, that, that, that question is taken. You cannot ask that question anymore. <laughs> you cannot ask the same question. Anybody else? Yes? I didn't understand what's the safe power. Excellent question. Excellent question. What is safe power? Remember what we're talking about. Full LED. Your system requires 15 volts, okay? But there's no there's a mismatch. There's no 15 volt source. But we're not gonna just gonna deny you power. 
safe power means USB will always provide 5 volts. Right? <coughs> Legacy USB, 5 volts. Right? The 5 volts is always there. So even though there's a mismatch, you will still get 5 volts. We'll call that safe power. So you could still maybe do something with it. Right? The, the device may not reach its full capability. Right? But you could at least power LED telling the user, right? hey, you don't have the right power. Right? So you get 5 volts. That's an excellent question. Yes? How profiles do you uh, switch with the... Okay, 5 profiles, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts. Thank you so much. One last question. Nobody? I think the cameraman deserves a kit. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you for attending. Thank you so much. Thank you.